Hello and welcome to this week's DJ Force X in conversation and my special guest this week after a long time of trying, finally getting them, finally paths have crossed. <laughs> uh, I have Aria. He is the drummer from Skin Dread. Um, Aria and I go back a while now. Um back to one of his previous bands actually and uh when skin dread were out and about just playing venues playing you know getting out and about when they started around that 2000 2000 early 2000s um witnessed them playing a few shows and also played alongside them uh in zero cipher and um yeah uh seeing the progression from sharing stages with that band in front of 20 people on a rainy sunday in uh in in london let's say this for a comparison sake uh we played the underworld a couple of times um to seeing them basically play us a, a, a rainy sunday but at brixton academy you know there's a slight difference in venue size at that point um but just seeing how like that energy i mean I, obviously i caught them a couple of years ago uh when i was back in florida uh they came through st petersburg and played state theater so i caught up with them then um or watched them then i should say and um yeah uh just seeing them command a venue of that size uh especially with all the new music that they were playing as well and like how quickly people have picked that stuff up because that album only came out that day uh or the day before i should say that show but also they released a couple of singles prior to it but people singing along and just the, it's it's always wowed me that band of how they can command either a small amount of people or such a large amount of people they just have that knack they have that sound they have that groove that that just it's just fun just fun 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 uh they were supported by cky um and danko jones both of which i got to interview as well um which they'll be coming i think in the next couple of weeks um we'll see how that goes and um yeah no it was just really nice to catch up with aria um and just sort of chat about the new album the tour and all that kind of stuff um i would actually love to get them back in for more of a long form interview uh because there's a few things i wanted to cover didn't quite get the chance because time constraints and whatnot but nevertheless um here is aria from skin tread enjoy Slag. <laughs> you slag. So, um, keeping it light on the pressing, is that good for you? Yeah, whatever's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I generally, I put these things up unedited unless there's anything specific you okay, don't want yeah, in there. Okay, oh, great, so you don't have to watch your language. No, right? no, oh, okay, no, like, yeah, because so. it's going up as my podcast as well, so. Okay, fantastic. We're, we are censorship free. Fantastic. <laughs> so, Aria, we are here at Brixton Academy in London. Uh, welcome to my show, first and foremost. Thank you very much, Barney. It's uh, very nice to see you and uh, in sunny London. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think we've had every bit of weather this week. It started, we were in Brighton last week and it was, well, it was, it was boiling hot. And then just, you know, it's just progressed to this. This is very British. It is. The, the opening gambit of a, uh, a podcast radio show start talking about the weather. So <laughs> we I apologise to people that really don't care about that sort of stuff. But yes, I was in shorts and flip-flops last week and it was lovely. So Yeah, well it was different from the last time we met because the last time we met was actually in Florida. Yes, where it's uh, summertime all the time. Pretty much. Yeah, lovely. Pretty much, yeah. And uh, that was, I mean, that was a good show. I really enjoyed that one. Was that in St. Petersburg? That was. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah we briefly chatted while there was noise going on but uh yeah it was uh it was actually nice to see you guys after well after moving out there for as long as we did mm. but now we're back you know so fantastic to see you guys more more regularly yeah, yeah, yeah totally. to see you guys here tonight in brixton um so yeah we're here to uh, chat about your album new album which dropped we yesterday did. uh big tings yes um it is a fantastic album i was i thank you as soon as i got up yesterday i had it for my commute to work on the on apple music and uh yeah i loved it Thank you very it much. Is, yeah, um, we're really proud of it. We're really proud of it. Cool. I mean, it was an amazing experience writing and recording it. You know, uh, the fights were kept to a minimum. <laughs> That's always <laughs> Which good. Which is always good. Yeah. Um, we recorded it in Peter Gabriel's studio in um, in Box. Oh, called nice. Real World, which yeah. is uh, 
legendary studio. I mean, it's the, it's the best studio I've ever been into. Just oh. walking in straight away, you're like, oh my God. It was incredible. So we were there for about three weeks. Did all the tracking, uh, guitars, bass, drums, mm. overdubs, all that kind of stuff. Then we recamped to uh, Rockfield yep. in Wales, which is um, where Queen did Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. And Benji did all his vocals there. So, I mean, we were so lucky that we... Hit we had this time in these legendary studios. Yeah. I and mean, we were just soaking up the atmosphere while we yeah, were there, you know? I mean, you can hear that in the record as well. Um, as, right. And like, obviously production side, it sounds fantastic, um, which, it, you know, that's always good, especially for me, I DJ as well. So playing your tracks out in clubs and stuff. Brilliant. It sounds fantastic. Not that the other stuff never did, because that's always been a, a floor filler. But um, this album just feel, felt a bit more, um, you, you've, to me, it felt like you were a bit more focused about what you wanted to do with it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there was much... a mission statement at the very beginning about yeah. what we wanted to do and what we wanted to achieve. And I think um, I got really, really close to it, man. I mean, I think it's about as spot on as I could have hoped for it to have turned out. Yeah. It's, it, it, there was a definite, we need to change things up. Yeah. Not just for our fans who love us and like us and have been there from the beginning, but also for ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's like, almost 20 years together seven <laughs> albums deep it's like my favorite bands didn't make album number seven most of them you know yeah so yeah it, it, it was like people go oh we want the old stuff it's like well a polite fuck you because <laughs> I, we don't want to do the old stuff because we've already done it we want to do new things not to say we won't go back to revisiting certain things yeah. but it was like pushing forward and trying to do something different for us it was de- it was on a melodic scale really everything it, had to be melodic for it, us it felt more like um yeah along with the, the like, like you say melodic side of things but it felt more like you're just making uh, a rock album yes as such whereas That's exactly it, yeah. skin red before you've always had elements of of multiple genres mm. within your sound and that's that's broadcast across your last you know, your previous six albums this one like i said just seemed more focused onto that kind of rock like anthemic kind of um you know st- almost stadium rock kind of sound that, totally like big big tunes <laughs> big tings as it's called um but you had some like a couple of ballads on there as well like slower ones that- i mean for me it was after we had kill the power if we'd have done big tings after kill the power it, i think people would have seen the progression there yeah. after because because kill the power was our most melodic record yeah. before that yeah. and we were trying these same elements that we tried on big things were there and kill the power and so all we've done is gone okay so let's look at the albums we've done and what we want to do forward and we know we touched on things on kill the power that we hadn't quite came to fruition and when we did volume we were like fuck this we want to do just riff out yeah and we thought volume was our heaviest record that we'd ever put out from front to back just yeah. riffs everything in there anything you could want from skin dread and with this thing we were like no we want to go back to kill the power work on the songwriting and those elements that we still have in there there's still drum and bass in there there's still there ragga there's yes. still hip-hop <laughs> there's still all of those things but they're not going right verse hip-hop chorus heavy metal pre-chorus uh, drum and bass yeah. it's like each song has its own flavor yes. rather than one song having, having all the flavors yeah. that's the, the main difference i'd yeah. say yeah i was gonna say because i like said the elements are still there like the drum but is it alive i think it's called yeah so yeah. that's a, a drum and bass tune from start to finish yeah and that's that was what we wanted to do we didn't want to mess around it would have been very easy for us to after the first chorus of alive to go into a big heavy riff yeah and we discussed it and we there were multiple riffs and multiple things and we were like no let's just go straight up yeah, it, it, it's more challenging for us as players to keep in a pocket and let the vocal do the talking. Yes, rather than it going right. Well, I'm bored of playing this one groove. I, yeah. I need we need to change it up. And it's you know that was a challenge. It was yeah. you had to be strict and hard on yourself. No, I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of drum and bass myself. And that yeah, track, I, I was like, it just came it came at that point in the album where you're like, it's good, good groove, and then suddenly it just picks it up. And like, yeah, it was great. Off. It's great. I love, I love drum and bass. So yeah, it's all I mean, good. <laughs> and that was the thing. It was trying to make a for alive in particular was an accessible drum and bass song you know yeah it was like this would be our version of something that maybe rudimental would do yes that when that's what we were looking at rudimental or disclosure one of those types of yeah. bands i know people are gonna go oh you know you're selling out it's like there's nothing to sell no, there <laughs> we've done the selling i mean, I mean you, you want to sell out your band that's how you make your living as well yeah, i mean you know it's not as though you've suddenly gone pop no, i mean there, there, com- there's always been those elements yeah on, on on Babylon, the second single we ever released, well, the first thing was Set It Off. If you yeah. go and listen to Set It Off, Set It Off is lightweight. Yeah. So it's, selector. 
Yeah. These are poppy tunes. So is Pressure. Yep. They're melodic songs. Yep. And I don't think p- people go, oh, I like the heavy stuff like the first album. It's like, well, have you listened to the first album? <laughs> it's, yes, it has Bruises and Nobody and World Domination, but it also has Pressure Selector set it off. Yeah. So those three tracks that still carry on today as well. Still carry on today. I mean, and, you know, major key. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uplifting stuff, not minor, not savage ripping your head off those songs have been part of us the fear we want it's you know yeah uh, yeah that's why to us when we did this and we sort of saw a bit of criticism online oh we were like <laughs> really really get off your keyboard you can yep. <laughs> Um, one question I was going to ask because I don't have obviously the inlay to the album. You've got a rapper on uh, Last Chance. Yes, did a verse. Who who is that? Just That's that Aiden Coker. He's a uh, up and coming rapper from London. Um, we thought it would be just really cool to have a you know we, we've never had like a guest rapper come on because Benji yeah. usually ticks that box. Yes, you know, and yeah. it was like for us, it just gave it another flavour. And you know, we toyed with asking we asked a few grime people and. You're like, no, I don't really want to do a grind thing because I think that's so in the moment. It's like when we toyed with, you know, uh, dubstep. It was of a moment and of yeah. a time. And I thought staying true to like a like a hip hop guy. Yeah. Because hip hop's always been there and it's never going to go away. Yeah. I don't, I'm hoping grime doesn't go away. But, you know, these things, you know, they ride they, the wave at the moment. The flows of it. And, yeah, yeah. At the moment, that thing's popular. And for us, it was like, well, Aiden was this up and coming um hip-hop artist and we just really liked what he did he was friends with our producer and it just worked really well so excellent no so because i i was just trying to place it and because i was streaming it i didn't have the the artwork to yeah. kind of look it up or anything like that so um but yeah um with the album you've you released uh, a video recently as well for um the, is it that's my jam yeah that's it yeah that's yeah. my jam yeah um and that was a uh, was that one of your was it a project that you were heavily obviously heavily involved in because it doesn't as such have the band in it yeah i mean that was um it was my idea and yeah. my vision i directed it with a guy yeah um who filmed it and everything and i storyboarded it all out and worked on it for about a month getting into preparation and then we had two days to shoot it and it was just guerrilla filming yeah you know? I, I remember seeing you putting up looking for people around like around the clapham ground and stuff and- yeah it was um things basically it was my first sort of dipping my toes into like trying to produce a video and get things in a way where it was things were going to happen yes and so many things we had lined up we were like yes and then on wednesday before we were shooting all these things fell through and we were like <laughs> fuck and you know people came to the rescue and yeah made it great actually cool of course really what, what of was the um inspiration behind the video because it's it's not your straightforward music video it kind of reminded me of um to a kind of like you know the daft punk video the fun totally yeah the, the dog going into the city and stuff and it, that obviously was obviously the the imagery side of it obviously the story's slightly different on that front but what was I mean the... f- for us and for myself I wanted to do a note to like the 90s type of videos yeah where you would see something on MTV at the time or you know headbangers ball or whatever whatever, t- whatever medium you would watch yeah. music videos and the music video wasn't just a live performance by a band with a story and I was getting bored of doing those kind of videos and I just wanted to do something where it didn't matter what the band who the band were yeah you could listen to the track and watch the video and there'd be no connection to the band yeah who were actually performing it and so the story was quite simple it was um because i came up with the idea for big things and the cat yeah and i got my friend sam to bring it alive and as soon as he did it and i saw it, i was like we've got to make a video out of this and it just became the cat's journey from when he leaves his house yeah to when he comes back home and you know we got an actor patrick bergen to play the part and he's like the bad guy in EastEnders yes he's yeah. been sleeping with the enemy in Patriot Games so nice. he's like a Hollywood <laughs> actor he was incredible we filmed in his house in Brighton all those yeah. scenes and uh, so, you know it was all it all just came together and worked really well it was just trying to have as much fun as you can in yeah. three and a half minutes really yeah I was going to say it's a fun video you know and um, who is who's the person um, playing the cat that's a guy called uh, Bradley Salter and uh, he was a, he's a professional dancer um, he was absolutely incredible. You know, he couldn't breathe in that mask. I was going to say, because some of those moves he was pulling off, I mean, he must have been sweltering in there. Yeah, he was really sweltering. I played the part of the dog, and my little part was about 30 seconds. Of, <laughs> and I couldn't breathe, and I couldn't see. And I said to him after, I was like, fucking hell, dude, you know, props to you. You've been in this thing for two days. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it was quite great. It was quite fun seeing the clapping ground, because I remember I played Led back 
back years ago and that dance floor oh it's incredible the light up dance yeah, yeah, floor yeah. in there it's like proper old school disco yeah exactly and it was you know it was Saturday Night Fever yeah Team Wolf you know 90s videos mix them all together hopefully nice. you get a good Skin Dread video I mean I was really proud of it and I thought Steve Clark who filmed it yeah and directed with me did an incredible job yeah he was amazing so have you got any future ideas for videos I looking? do yeah I think I want to do a few more yeah, yeah. I mean, is I'm it into it for Skin Dread or are you looking maybe I would, do, I would do things for other bands if they came to me yeah, yeah. I mean it's I'm more of a I'm more of an ideas kind of guy. Yep. And so I get the ideas and I can storyboard, but I, you know, I don't film, I don't edit. Yeah. I sat with Steve and, you know, we, having someone you trust like that to see the vision through and do and get it exactly right is very rare. And yeah. so, you know, if me and Steve wanted to do something together, yeah, maybe. I think I'd probably do another video for Skindra with him. Nice. And, well, I, I know I would, yeah. <laughs> well, I look forward to that then. Yeah. That's all good. Um, yeah, and shout out to Sam as well. I know Sam. I uh, did your artwork. Yeah, for, Dosprod. For album, Dosprod. Um, Padman. Yeah, he's done. I, I, I'll, I'll speak about him at another point. I'm going to try and get him on my show at some point mm. just because I want to speak to other elements of music industry and stuff so um so yeah i'm um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up in a moment because i know you guys got to get off and uh you got your uh sound checking sound checking and meets and greets and all that stuff yeah, it's and great. All that kind of stuff <laughs> um so um i got these basically these sets of questions i normally ask most people that are on my show yeah um they're not easy questions or they might be for you in this one but um <laughs> what is your um if you could name three albums that define you as a person or as a musician that you are today, what, what, what three albums really shaped that? Um, Night of the Opera by Queen. Nice. Uh, Appetite for Destruction, Guns N' Roses. Excellent. And probably No Jacket Required, Phil Collins. Nice. You did knock them out real quickly. Yeah, easy peasy. God, some people spend ages on those. <laughs> thing is, it's like they're, they're just albums that I happened from when I was a kid. Yeah. And they were the first things I really heard and got into, so it was really easy for me. Cool. I didn't have to... I, look... I've done these things with other people before, and they're going to name your favorite band. Yeah. And, and, and there's always one guy who goes, let me think of the coolest possible thing I can say <laughs> for the cred. It's like, man, music's music. If you enjoy it, yep. that power to you. Yeah. You know, so. Awesome. Awesome. Um, um, do you have any hobbies away from the music? I know you sort of, obviously, full-time with this. Um, yeah, I mean, hobbies away from music. Um, I like walking, nice long walks. I go with my wife. We go, we travel around and you know hike around and do all that kind of thing, yeah. which is lovely. I mean, for for me, seeing the world is probably the most important hobby I could have. Yeah. I do it with the band, but to do it with my wife and afterwards, you know, we get to try before you buy. Really, yeah. the skin dread. So, you know, it's the That's best good. travel agency in the world. It is. But, I was gonna so, say you've been you've been across the world. With yeah, this band, so. and like, you know, traveling around is great, and just seeing other cultures and. I think that's. I'm lucky I'm able to do that after being out on the road and we yeah. can go off on holiday. I think day to day. I mean, it's my life's pretty. You know, it's intense with skin dread. I try to do the social yeah. media, get on board as much as I can. Really yeah. involve myself with the business. It just yeah, yeah. It just snowballs. So day to day is pretty skin dread heavy. Cool, cool. Well, thank you, Aria. Thank you. Um, mate. So um, yeah, everyone, check out Big Things out now. Napalm. Um, with the police going by now. <laughs> I know. You them. Um, but yeah, I'll let you get off Aria. And, Thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, thank you for this. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoy the show tonight. Cool. Will do. I will. Thanks, I will. Steve. It'll be good.